All right, welcome to SU Pod, especially heinous. I am Gabe. I'm Tasha. We are on season five, episode ten, Shaken. Hated it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right. Opening scene, there are these two nannies. They're talking about the families they work for and the kids they care for at the park. One nanny is younger. Her name is Sarah. She's kind of a newer nanny and she hates working for Mrs. Pritchard because her kid's kind of a dick. That's what she. Yeah. That's what she said. Yeah. (laughs) I didn't mean it the way that I would normally mean it. Yeah. She really wants to quit, but she needs the job. The other nanny, Veronica, she's older and more experienced and is like offering advice on timeouts and shit she's more experienced just fucking ask her mm-hmm. and also she's eventually going to go back to law school and get appointed as a reoccurring judge in season 18 so oh. she goes from this to becoming like a regular judge she's also the singing voice for abuela in the encanto movie really yeah oh my god i didn't know that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Sarah says that Mrs. Pritchard won't let her put a, the kid in time out or get spanked or anything because it limits her creativity. This is still early. So people were still like spanking kids and shit. So she doesn't even let me hit her kid. She doesn't even <laughs> let me hit her preschooler. Like what the fuck is with this, this kid lady? is 20 months old. Right. So that's almost two years old. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was crazy because she was like, keep your jacket on. Don't take it off like last time and just lets this kid run off. And I'm like, that is way too young to just be running off yeah you know what i mean right i don't know uh but yeah nowadays at least i don't know at that age i was a pretty intense hoverer i mean for multiple reasons yeah bananas to me so then sarah the younger nanny is like lucy she doesn't see her she can't find her and so she like freaks out and is is running around looking for her and they can't find her yeah she goes from zero to fucking barfing in the trash can freaking out which is pretty appropriate for like a 20 month old child you just let run off in New yeah. York City, but whatever. So now it's a crime scene. Um, a responding officer is talking to Stabler. She called SVU because there was some creeps hanging around the park, apparently. If it was a pedophile abduction, she wanted SVU to know as soon as possible. So the missing child is Lucy Pritchard. She's 20 months old. Cragen is on the scene, and he's going to be Stabler's partner on this case. So Benson is at a hearing that's going to take a few days. So this is like a Cragen stabler detective cowboy episode. (laughs) So this is pretty much an episode of Walker, Texas Ranger. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Veronica had told Sarah that she had seen some creepy guys hanging around the park taking pictures and stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. But Sarah didn't see him. So let me tell you this. From the beginning, from this moment, I don't trust Veronica. Really? Already? Yes. Okay. Mainly because in my experience working with kids and like nannies and stuff like that, it's always the ones that think they fucking know everything, talk like they know everything Mm -hmm. and are the worst to the kids. Okay. So that was just where I was at. Okay. So Craig and Stabler are walking through the park and then... (laughs) They can't find this kid, right? All of a sudden, Stabler's like, wait a minute, (laughs) and jumps the fence, and there's Lucy. She's in the bushes behind the fence on the ground in a bright red dress that nobody saw, (laughs) and they call for an ambulance, and he grabs her, picks her up, and carries her away. I know, and she had those little, like, Mary Jane shoes and, like, white tights, which makes her even, that's what little kids wear, like, 20-month-old. I'm like, what are you, why are you even alone? It's crazy. (sighs) So, in the hospital, Stabler's getting medical updates on Lucy by that fucking one lady, Yes. What is she? Who is she? I love her. This doctor is played by actor Julie White. She's been in everything. Mm-hmm. And she was Nadine in the 90s show Grace Under Fire, which I strangely <gasps> loved. I loved, I loved that Grace too. Under Fire. Yeah. And she was like her BFF. Yeah. Um. So in this, she's Dr. Anne Morella, and she's in five more episodes after this. So the CT scan shows intracranial bleeding a laceration on the back of Lucy's head, and she's going to be getting surgery to reduce the swelling. No rape kit was done because there wasn't a lot of time and because her clothing was intact and there were no signs of semen on her when they did that, like, light scan thingy. Mm. Cragen walks up and tells Stabler that he talked to Lucy's mom, Evelyn. Lucy's dad died from a heart attack the year before, and her mom works at an ad agency and is on her way to the hospital now. It's going to take a minute for her to get there. In the waiting room, Stabler is interviewing Sarah, the nanny. Sarah says that the other nanny, Veronica, had seen some creepy guy at the park, but Sarah hadn't. Sarah takes Lucy to the park every day, and she's feeling super bad and guilty, of course. Stabler's like, where else do you go? And Sarah also takes Lucy to the zoo and museums if it's raining out. They see the same people all the time, and she's never noticed anyone paying unusual attention to Lucy. 
Just then, Lucy's mom, Evelyn, gets to the hospital. She's running up the stairs. Stabler and Cragen introduce themselves and tell her that Lucy is in surgery and that Sarah, the nanny, has been super helpful. They would like throw that in right away to be like, let's just not shit on Sarah right now. Mm. But she's fucking pissed and says to Sarah, how could you let this happen? Obviously, she's going to blame Sarah for Lucy getting hurt. Uh. Wouldn't. Cragen's like, hey, Sarah, let's go get some coffee and like takes her away. Yeah. This mom has also been in absolutely everything. She Mm. was a cop in Silence of the Lambs. She was in SVU in season four. She was in a bunch of episodes episodes of Carnival, Deadwood, and she was Jack Black's mom in Tenacious D, Pick of Destiny. Oh God. Yeah, like young Jack Black when he- When they were it, sitting at the table and- Yes! And Meatloaf is like, takes off his belt or whatever. Yes, yes. She He's plays like, you're not gonna love it. rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. I forgot his dad was Meatloaf. <laughs> yeah. Evelyn is super upset and crying and says she doesn't know what she'll do if she loses Lucy. Stabler hugs Evelyn and he's trying to comfort her and she's just sobbing into Stabler's big fat chest. <laughs> And she's like, why is God punishing me? Big fat chest. (laughs) Yeah. Stabler's got dad eyes this whole time. And he tells her to go sit in the chapel because sometimes it can help. Yeah. He's just hard dad relating right now. Yeah. Dude, I love Stabler this episode. Dude, he barely talked about being a dad the whole time when it was all about being a parent. Mm -hmm. It was pretty cool. I was like... How are you not kicking through the fucking door and being like, I'm a dad too, you know? Is this about me? This isn't about me? Yeah. Oh, and the last bit he says, I was like, oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you know what? Everybody has felt that. (sighs) That's apparent, I'm sure. Dude. More than once. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. So cut to Evelyn crying in the chapel. Stabler is outside the door and like looking at the ground. Craig tells him to go interview Sarah and he'll let Stabler know what's up with Lucy after surgery. Mm -hmm. So Stabler goes to interview Veronica. Remember, she's the older nanny that Sarah was hanging out with at the park. Veronica calls Sarah a, quote, babysitter, not a certified nanny. Shut up. An unqualified caregiver. And I'm just like, you hit kids. You hit kids. I. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. She points out that she's she's also an actor. I like genuinely believe this woman is a child abuser. She points out that she, Veronica, is the one who pays attention to her surroundings. And Sarah just wasn't. And that's why Veronica saw the creepy guy at the park and Sarah didn't. Mm-hmm. Jesus fucking Christ, lady. This incredible nanny gives Stabler the description. He was a white guy, mid-40s, short, dark hair, stocky build. <laughs> And so, so this whole time she's in this kitchen getting shit together and we realize that there's a fucking child in the room. She's like, here's your fucking PB and J, Tommy. Anyway, I'm going to continue with this adult conversation <laughs> right. in front of a six year old. That's super inappropriate. Right. I'm such a good nanny. Oh, <laughs> she tells Stabler that this creepy dude was taking photos and standing on some big rocks. So she initially thought he was someone's dad and she couldn't tell Stabes if the dude was specifically focused on Lucy or not. Stabler and Veronica head down to the park so that Veronica can show Stabes where the guy was taking photos from. First of all, this this pile of rocks is in every single movie that takes place in New York, period. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> this pile of rocks is extremely <laughs> famous. They had to remove the ropes around it. <laughs> they do a step and repeat red carpet in front of it usually. It signs autographs. <laughs> It's like this pile of rocks. It's like <laughs> if it had a voice. Anyway, oh my god, this 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 fuck. I couldn't even with this. Mm-hmm. Oh I know god. it's I... classic, classic. This is one of the old hits. Okay, this is Freebird for SVU. Stabler sends Veronica to the precinct to meet with a sketch artist while he checks things out. As he's going over to check out this beautifully polished, famous rock pile. <laughs> rock, rock. Look over here. <laughs> A reporter comes up to Stabler to get some case info and Stabler tells the dude to buzz off. But the guy keeps bugging him and gets fucking checked by Stabes. Mm -hmm. CSU Captain Judy walks up and apologizes for not being able to get rid of the guy earlier. But it doesn't matter because this story is going to be in the paper by morning. Judy found absolutely zero clues where Lucy had been found. She is a CSU captain. Mm -hmm. She's been doing this is her life's fucking work. Okay. She's like, gee, we haven't checked the rocks yet. Oh, God. Weird. We haven't checked the area where there was a perfect vantage point. It's interesting. So Stabler tells Captain Judy about the guy on the rocks. They go look for evidence. Ba 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 ba. Stabler trips over the guy's entire twenty-three and Me and photos of the guy's grandparents at Ellis Island. <laughs> 
JK, but he does find an empty film roll box. Okay, so exactly ba- on top at the very peak of this famous rock mound. It was ridiculous. Yeah, it was actually in a glass case with a spotlight on it. <laughs> so it's a box. It's a box about the size of a what would you say? It's about the size of an iPhone, you know, just about the size of a basic iPhone, a little bit thicker than that. Yeah, what where films you would get, come in. Yeah. Yeah, rolls of film. So there are probably multiple rolls of film in this, and then you put it in your camera, and then you take the film to a place to get developed. Mm. Fucking Walgreens or CVS or wherever, fucking yeah. Photo Hut. Back at the precinct, Kwong and Stabler go over the case details. Kwong says using film is unusual for pedophiles, and a lot of them are going digital now to keep from getting caught, because they don't want to go to... Yeah, because you have to take them... Yeah. yeah. They don't want to get them developed because somebody has to develop them and then they see them. Yes. That used to be like a whole shtick in movies and TV where Mm -hmm. it'd be like somebody working at the photo kiosk and they're like, oh, look at this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Look at this person on vacation. Oh, somebody took a picture of their boobs. So during this conversation that Huang and Staves are having, Stabler tosses and catches an apple, just like a classic hot guy move where he's like, it's not even a big deal, but only slick hot guys do it. Like, you'll never see an alfalfa-looking motherfucker, like, toss an apple up and catch it. Just mid-conversation. You know what I mean? We don't yeah. even, do you know what I'm saying? No, I do that do in the, the grocery store thing? all the time, and I always feel fucking cool as shit when I do it. It's a it's a cool yeah. hot guy move. Every apple, every avocado I do that with. Every le- uh, lemon and limes, too. Also, yeah. I'll do it with things that Pretty are... Pretty much any round fruit or <laughs> vegetable. Yeah. <laughs> Anything that's like a rectangle or long and skinny, I do the like flip catch thing, too. Really? You know how to do that? Yeah. I'm like, oh. everybody's looking at me. Everybody wants to bone me. I know it. Yeah. Men want to fight you in the parking lot, and women's panties are dropping. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then when I drop something, I go, nah, nobody's looking. <laughs> <laughs> Craigan comes up. He's got a file for the perp. His name is Robert Paulson. No, his <laughs> name is De- his name is Dennis Papillion. His prints were on the box, the film box. He's been arrested for burglary, and he works at a drugstore. His photo matches the description that Veronica gave lead JK. This isn't going to have nothing to do with the case, but let's go. Yeah. So now we're at Save Mart drugstore. Craig and Stabler show a dude Dennis's picture and ask him if he knows him. And this dude is like, um, yeah, he's right over there. He got like overly scared. We never <laughs> see him again in anything. So Dennis works in the photo department. Craig and Stabler go up to him and say, Dennis Pillion. And he's like, yeah, who wants to know? <laughs> And Craigan says, the badges say, we asked the questions. Where were you this morning? And I was like, chill. He literally works at the photo developing counter. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can see where this is going, but let's right. go there. So he's been at work since they opened at seven. And he tells them to check the security tapes and then asks what this is all about. Stabler tells him his prints were on the film box they found at the park. And he's like, "Uh, yeah, probably because I fucking sold it. And then he motions handing it to someone. Yeah. Dennis processes the photos, too. He did process the photos that the guy had taken at the park, and he called them boring. The guy had already picked them up and dropped off more film an hour before detectives got to the store. The guy's name is Ronnie Ickles. Old Ronnie Ick. Icky Ronnie. (laughs) Icky Ronnie. Yeah. (laughs) That's the name of the order. Craigan says they'll make a special delivery. They skip the whole finding and whatever. In the precinct, Ronnie's being questioned by Craig and Stabler. And he's like, hold on, I'm no damn baby raper. Mm. And I was like, whoa. Stabler's like, right, hanging at playgrounds, taking pictures, normal for a grown man, huh? So turns out this guy is an unlicensed PI. He didn't want to get involved when the cops were called because he didn't want to, like, get in trouble for fucking... Practicing without a license. Yeah. Craigan tells him to fucking talk or they're going to arrest him for running shit illegally. So Ronnie Icky works for a rich guy named David Jeffries. He was hired to spy on his nanny to see how his kid was being treated when he wasn't around. After Ronnie's interview, we see Benson for a split second. She gets to the precinct with the other photos. Stabler says Lucy's still in surgery. Craigan says Rodney's story is confirmed by his rich guy client. Stabler says there's a lot of pics of kids and nannies. There's a series showing Lucy walking away from where she was playing and then Sarah looking for her. There was like no time for an attack. Mm -hmm. It was like a minute, maybe 30 seconds. I don't know. Right. Craigan thinks that maybe Lucy just walked off and got hurt. Maybe there is no fucking crime. That It's just an accident. Benson picks up a phone call. Lucy's doctor wants to see Stabler right now. 
The timing. At St. Mark's Hospital, the doc and Stabler are doing a walk and talk. Lucy is stable but unconscious. She has a bilateral hematoma and retinal shearing, which are signs of shaken baby syndrome. The doctor tells Stabler that Lucy was shaken so hard Mm. and she has severe trauma. If she recovers, she will have permanent brain damage. I mean, this caused her to almost die. Mm. Stabler looks through the glass at Lucy in a crib hooked up to machines and shit. And this is a horrible moment. But the spin into dad justice stare off Mm -hmm. that Stabler does really lifted my spirits. Like he was looking through the pane of glass and he just spun on his heel and he put on his dad cape in that moment. Yeah. And also this whole time, this whole episode, I was thinking about this conversation I had with a friend of ours. You know, my friend... Her husband, Mm -hmm. he's an ocular surgeon. And we were talking about it one night. We were like talking about his job. And one of the largest populations he works on are babies that need their retinas reattached Mm -hmm. as a result of being shaken. Oh, my God. And I gasped so hard when he was, I was like, I just, I hated hearing it. And he's got a lot of compassion for parents and told us about sitting down and talking to the ones that have hurt their kids. And it doesn't take a lot to hurt. A baby in that way. Mm. And he's had a lot of like really heartbreaking conversations with parents that have gotten to the point of overwhelm and this has happened. Mm-hmm. I've seen videos, TikTok stuff of like parents, like new parents, like and they're going back and forth, you know, they're not getting sleep and they're like, you know, handing the baby back and forth. And the one time a guy was holding the screaming baby and the mom was like, do you need a break? And he was like, no, I'm good. And she's like, but like, do you need a break for safety? Mm-hmm. And she and he was like, nope, I'm good. So people checking in because, I mean, we're humans. It's not an mm-hmm. excuse, but I could imagine. I mean, if I hear a baby crying in a story, yeah. like, I, I can't handle it. I can't handle babies crying on planes and like whatever. Yeah. Back at the precinct, Corner Warner, who I feel like we haven't seen for a while. Or did I just miss her? I don't know. I don't think we have. Yeah. She explained shaken baby syndrome to Stabler and Novak. And she's got props too, by the way. She brought props. She fucking <laughs> does. She's the Gallagher of explaining <laughs> biology to these guys. <laughs> She had a wooden mallet and a fucking watermelon. Fucking nice. Everybody had to wear rain slickers. Yeah. (laughs) Nice reference, dude. But so, yeah, she had she had an egg in a jar and I hated it and it made me really sad. But obviously, we I mean, we can do the the math here. Visual math yeah. on that. Yeah, we can we can horse math this for sure. We can horse math what happened to the egg when she shook the fucking jar and she was comparing it to what happens to a baby's brain. Mm-hmm. Corner Warner is planning on testifying that shaken baby syndrome is the only explanation for Lucy's injuries. Mm-hmm. Novak wants to know how that could happen on a playground with no one noticing. But Corner Warner. Warner says that she thinks Lucy's injuries could have happened 12 to 48 hours before Lucy was found at the park based on the amount of blood in her brain. Oh, Jesus. So this could have happened any time in the last three days. Yeah. But by Hume... Right. So in the hospital, Stabler speaks with Lucy's mom, Evelyn. Evelyn says that Lucy was fine before she left for work that day, walking and talking. The doctors told her about the shaken baby syndrome and how her brain could have bled out for days. And she's upset that Lucy was hurt and she didn't know. Lucy spends most of her time with Evelyn and Sarah. And Evelyn's not dating anyone since her husband died. So... Obviously, they are thinking it's Sarah. So on Monday, Mm. Evelyn worked late. Lucy was asleep when she got home. And Lucy was alone with Sarah for days. Evelyn says that she likes Sarah but wanted someone with more experience but couldn't afford it. One time, she caught Sarah yelling at Lucy, but that's it. Evelyn had noticed bruising on Lucy before, but Sarah had always told her that Lucy fell or got hit by another kid. And then Evelyn is like, oh my God, do you think Sarah hurt Lucy? And then Stabler says, do you? So now we're at the precinct. Sarah is talking to Stabler. She says she's only supposed to work from eight to six, but Evelyn always gets home after nine. Stabler's doing this, like, I'm trying to relate to you thing. Mm -hmm. And he says, oh, my God, that's so frustrating. Long hours. You couldn't pay me to do what you do. Screaming kids drive me nuts. Sarah is totally biting. And she's like, oh, Lucy is such a screamer and throws fits when her mom leaves for work. Lucy is just a little girl, but can make me so fucking mad. And then she admits to spanking her a few months ago for throwing a toy at her. Mm -hmm. And then Stabler says, we all lose control. We all have our own breaking point. Then Sarah becomes upset when she starts to realize Stabler is kind of insinuating that she hurt Lucy. Sarah says that Lucy fell down a lot that day and that she doesn't know how she got so badly injured. Stabler tells her that the injuries Lucy had were not caused by a fall. The music is getting all swelly. I hate that I say swelly so much, but whatever. So do our listeners because people have said shit. (laughs) 
the music is getting all hot, moist, and swelly. Slappy and swelly. <laughs> and she says... Swampy in there. <laughs> and then she says, well, then I don't know how she got hurt. Staler asks her to take a polygraph, but Sarah's like getting all worked up and she says she's afraid. Staler okay. tells Sarah that if there's something she's not telling him, now is the fucking time. She breaks down, starts snot crying, and says, sometimes... I took money from Evelyn's purse, five or 10 bucks at a time. And she's using the excuse that she's underpaid and overworked by Evelyn. And she's just upset, but doesn't say anything about mm-hmm. the kids. Stabler's like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. So after this interview, Stabler's talking to Novak. He says that he doesn't think Sarah hurt Lucy, but Novak reminds him that Huang said she fits the profile. Overwhelmed, cooped up with a difficult child. Stabler really leans into how upset Sarah was over taking a couple hundred bucks. So he doesn't think she'd hurt Lucy. Which, that's a stretch. Mm -hmm. Novak suggests that she's probably tricking him with that story and is actually a clever sociopath. (laughs) Wow. So they're on two ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Kragen pops out of his office and says the newspaper has an unnamed source saying they saw Sarah abusing Lucy. Mm -hmm. (gasps) That reporter from the park. From the rock. (laughs) Stabler finds the reporter Ian that wrote the article calling out Sarah for abuse. Oh my God, the rock is wearing like this glitzy ball gown. (laughs) Stabler finds the reporter Ian that wrote the article calling out Sarah for abuse. Okay, so Stabler exchanges exclusive info on the case for the name of the source that claims to have seen Sarah hurting Lucy with this fucking reporter dude. Mm -hmm. Ian tells Stabler that the source is Veronica, the other nanny. And Stabes goes, um, I already talked to her. And Ian goes, well, I guess he didn't ask the right question. Stabler fucking levels this guy. No, he doesn't. But he does need to go chat with, oh, Veronica Vaughn. That that lady's name kept going through my head. Oh, Veronica Vaughn. So hot. (laughs) Jesus. (laughs) Okay. Now Stabler's talking to Veronica. Stabler wants to know why Veronica didn't tell him about the abuse before. And she says that she didn't tell him because he didn't ask about it. And she thought the creep from the park hurt Lucy, which I kind of get because she's, you know, the cops show up. There's a serious thing going on with Lucy. And she was sitting there talking Mm -hmm. to Sarah. And, like you know, she wasn't. Who knows what que- they it, they didn't ask the right questions, it seems. Veronica's conflicted in speaking to Stabler and doesn't really want to tell Stabes about it because she says Lucy is a difficult kid and Sarah gets frustrated with her. And I'm like, well, don't work with kids then, you know? Mm-hmm. But then she tells Stabes that she's seen Sarah hit Lucy. Veronica says she's also hesitant because she's worried about testifying. Stabler told her, bitch, you already told thousands of people that read the paper. Twelve jurors shouldn't make you worried. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she's like, okay, fine. And she tells Stabler that a few weeks ago when she and Sarah took the kids to the museum, Lucy was running around, quote, like a little maniac. Mm -hmm. And she was throwing things. Okay, can we go back to Lucy's fucking 20 months old? Mm -hmm. If Sarah's not fully engaged with her, that's what a 20 month old kid, a nearly two year old kid is going to do. She's barely been walking for a handful of months, you know? The staff yelled at Sarah to control Lucy, and then Sarah smacked Lucy across the face hard. If I fucking saw, if I was in a museum and I saw someone smack a fucking kid, let alone a toddler, across the face, bitch. I know. Mm -mm. Isn't that crazy? I would be, no. I think this was a time that shit was just starting to like change over into like, hey, don't hit your kids maybe? I don't know. I mean, people still do, but. I don't know, dude. It was 2003 at this time. Mm -hmm. I was working with kids at this time. Mm -hmm. And I was appalled by some of the shit that I, you know, I so many times I thought this person shouldn't be working with children. Right. And stepped in and got myself in trouble for reporting people. Yeah. <laughs> for abusive behavior. Well, I, but I mean, I don't think it was cool for like nannies and s- stuff to hit other people's, like their clients' kids at all, even back when spanking was a thing. Like, I think that parents do that shit. Mm. Right. But I don't yeah. know. I have no fucking idea. I don't know, man. It's all, fu- it's all fucking wild to me. Yeah. All right. So now we're at the New York Children's Museum. Stabler is talking to a staff member. And even though this lady lives in New York City at a museum where like there's hundreds of people coming in and out every day, (laughs) she remembers Lucy. She's like, oh, yeah, I remember her. She was a very active little girl. She was super excited and touching the art, but that kind of stuff is encouraged. The artwork and exhibits are designed to be interactive. She wasn't mad at Lucy, but she remembers her nanny being mad and hitting Lucy really hard. The lady went to find a security guard, but when they got back there, Lucy and Sarah were gone. 
I mean, it was violent enough to call a security guard. Jeez. I know. And also, that's why she remembers her. Also mm-hmm. because any witness remembers every detail in SVU. Right. Stabler shows the staff member a photo of Sarah, and she says, oh yeah, she was there too. Sarah didn't hit Lucy. The staff member says that Veronica, who was also in the photo, hit Lucy. What? Mm. In the precinct, Veronica is in the interrogation room and Stabler comes in fucking pissed and gets in her face and tells her she's fucking delusional that thinking he wouldn't go to the museum and find shit out. (sighs) (laughs) (laughs) He ran there from the museum. Right. It's only two blocks away. It's not that far. Anyways, Uh, That's true. Yeah. Veronica says that Lucy deserved a spanking and that she needs discipline and that her behavior is atrocious. She is not even two years old. Fucking lady. I knew she was a piece of shit. I know. Stabler loses it and says, so is yours, sweetheart. You know that? What is it? You need attention so badly you run to reporter and lie to him to see your name in the paper? Veronica's pissed and says, I have years of training, detective. (laughs) And Stabler says, and I have witnesses saying you hit that child. Did you shake her too? Veronica says she hadn't seen Lucy in days before the incident at the park. She was with her employers at their country home all weekend and tells Stabler to fucking call them. Fucking a little bit later, Veronica's story checks out. Cragen says that they can still charge her with abuse for hitting Lucy at the museum. Stabler agrees. Stabler's mad. He's just fucking mad. And Cragen mm-hmm. picks up on it and says, are you mad at her or yourself? Stabler says that Lucy is in the hospital who isn't getting any better and he's not close to results and that Veronica wasted his fucking time. Munch comes in. Turns out Sarah passed the polygraph. Munch makes a joke about the Tribune being only good enough to line his birdcage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I knew you were going to fucking make a note of it, dude. <laughs> Stabler wants to go back to the hospital because, you know, he's a dad. He sure the fuck is. Mm-hmm. Stabler goes back to the hospital. Stabler lets Evelyn know that Sarah wasn't the one that hurt Lucy. And she asks who did. He replies, you tell me. And then stares at her without blinking for 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. Evelyn finally admits that someone else was around Lucy, a married man that she's been seeing. (gasps) Gasp. Drew Farmer. (laughs) He was left alone with Lucy. Cool. Like, what in the fuck? Drew Farmer. Ronnie Ickles. Icks in the farm. Icky Farms. Icky Farms. They're best friends. (laughs) Icky Farms. It's a weed (laughs) co-op. Icky Icky Farms. Sticky Icky Farms. (laughs) Yes! Oh my god, I was just gonna say that. (laughs) I mean, it's not a long way to get there. That one. I know. Yeah, that wasn't yeah, a, like a yeah. hard friendship thing, but it's still there. <laughs> it's still there. It still exists. All right. Precinct time. Squad's going over the new details. Craigan's like, why didn't we know about this fucking secret guy before? It's mm. almost like people don't tell us everything. It's so fucking weird, right? <laughs> Stabes tells him Drew's actually Evelyn's boss and Evelyn's been getting that overtime in. It's like, she's like, oh, I work all these long hours. I'm like, dude, you're porking. You work a long something. I don't know. <laughs> Sunday night, Drew's wife was out of town. And also, same night, Evelyn had given Sarah the night off. It doesn't take a horse to do this math. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Huang asks about this dude's take on babies. Turns out he doesn't have kids and he does not want any. Mm-hmm. So that means he, he'll he kill a child. Yes. The timeline shows that he was only with Lucy for 20 minutes. Cragen, again, very confused, is like, what could this kid have done in 20 minutes that set this guy off? And I'm like, are we victim blaming a toddler? Is that right. what we're doing here? What could this baby have done? What was she wearing? Yeah, right. Huang tells them that some people are super triggered by a baby's cries. Not me. I love it. I, I love it when I get when I get a massage, yeah. I bring my own playlist of a daycare center nursery. <laughs> That's like Huang swoops in with the hot take. Like <laughs> fucking some geez. people don't like babies crying. He's a professional. He knows. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it may not seem like much, but I, I think it's I think he's right on the money with that one. I know we'll find out. So Drew's brought in for questioning. Drew farmer, Drew. True tractor riding farmer. This dude was on All My Children for 28 years and looks Whoa. every day of it. He tells Stabler that Evelyn's an employee and nothing more. Stabler goes, yeah, Evelyn's OT lines up with when your wife was out of town. So, hmm, interesting. Mm-hmm. And Drew's like, I didn't touch that girl. Stabler, huh, sleeve, 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 roll, roll, roll. So you admit you were there. Mm-hmm. And Drew's like, oh. Dude, bro, look, if my wife finds out, she's going to cut my balls off. Did this 
guy not see Stabler's family man of the year plaques literally lining the halls of the precinct? <laughs> Stabler doesn't give a shit. He goes, criminal court's gonna fuck you up, guy. Quit jerking me around. I've always loved the way you say, you say jerking when you're, when you're like forcing it. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Stabler goes over the scenario of the date night at Evelyn's. So your wife went out of town and you went to Evelyn's, but she had to run to the store and Lucy woke up. Lucy started crying, which was going to take you off the train headed for pound town. <laughs> Stabler. Woo woo, motherfucker. <laughs> choo choo to the station. Why did I say woo woo? It's choo choo. <laughs> I have no idea, that but was I was weird. Gonna, just go through it. Woo woo. That's, that's a sassy train. Woo woo. <laughs> woo woo coming through. That's a fucking <laughs> bridesmaids party train. Woo. <laughs> woo woo. I'm getting married. She's getting married. Buy us drinks. Finger me. Wait. <laughs> The train infiltrates a gay bar and everybody in the bar is like, oh, God. <laughs> Stabler is covered head to toe in a goddamn rage rash. Mm -hmm. You shook that baby. You shook that baby, Drew. And then you got your rocks off with her mom. <laughs> I think I went cross-eyed when I did that. <laughs> Drew says he just wanted Lucy to go to sleep, so he picked her up and he laid her down again. She also had puked on his jacket. He didn't tell Evelyn because he didn't want to spoil their night. This is where I'm like, I don't think it was this guy. I think it was mom. I mean, he was also like, oh my God, I like didn't tell her mom because I didn't want to spoil the night. Like I fucked up. This kid was really hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was like, he didn't do it. Right. Same. I was like, okay, well, we're whittling away to the end result being Evelyn, the mom. Duh. I didn't mean duh like that hard <laughs> at you. I, I, yeah. I heard what I said. I was just like, like duh, TV, not you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it really came at you for some reason. And I'm sorry. It sure did. Like yeah. <laughs> I'm like, duh, you stupid bitch, Tasha Crawford. <laughs> I wasn't even talking about you. I was talking about the TV. <laughs> duh, you stupid bitch. July 4th, 1983, <laughs> born dumbass bitch. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about Jesus. On the other side of the glass in Craigan's jujitsu octagon. <gasps> hmm, imagine. Oh my god, Craig he's with Tom Hardy and his brother's like, no, Tommy. <laughs> Have you watched that movie? Have you seen Warrior? Mm -mm, you did this to me. Have you ever seen The Secretary? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Have you ever been to the Northside Co-op? <laughs> Have you seen Suits? <laughs> Craig and tell Stabler that the info isn't enough to arrest Drew and they gotta let him go. Stabler mm. is so fucking pissed about all these adults lying. He's like, fucking Lucy is sitting there in the hospital and nobody's fucking telling him the truth about shit. Yeah. Craig and says, well, fuck that. Let's just go back to the medical evidence and get all that shit together and let that tell the real story. This is an episode that Stabler could really use Benson. Just, just for emotional support. I think it's the only reason why he's not freaking out and talking about being a dad is because mm. Benson's not there. He can be vulnerable around her mm -hmm. and freak out, but he can't around these people. So he's have to keep it cool. So it's like good that she's not there. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. Exactly. He's just internally thinking about his own kids. So now we're at Coroner Warner's office. She had put together a timeline of the last three days before Lucy was hospitalized. The trauma probably happened on Sunday, or it did happen on Sunday, when Lucy was with Evelyn. Lucy wouldn't have barfed on dude's coat for no reason. So she thinks Evelyn shook her, and then when Lucy got up and the dude picked her up, she barfed because she was hurt. She had been shaken. Oh, that's a concussion symptom. Mm, yeah. Lucy has rib fractures from where she was grabbed. So they need to find out who grabbed her by measuring the perp's hands. Now we're at the hospital. Stabler and Coroner Warner find Evelyn. Stabler asks her to hold out her hand. And she's like, why? And he's like, just fucking help us out. Coroner Warner has this weird, like, rolly measuring thing and measures Evelyn's hands and it's a fucking match. Evelyn is arrested and she keeps saying, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I love my daughter. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, her, mm -hmm. her go-to thing was, I love my daughter. And it's like, that doesn't... Yeah, it doesn't mean you didn't hurt her. ...make you innocent, dude. Yeah. Cut to Evelyn in an interview room alone as Stabes walks out of that room and closes the door behind him. Novak's out there waiting for him. Stabler tells her that Evelyn has lawyered up. Novak doesn't think the jury's going to be sympathetic towards her, but Stabler thinks they are. Rebecca Balthus shows up, fucking Bevy D'Ange. Mm. She's Evelyn's lawyer. She's such a bitch. Oh, I, love I love it. <laughs> Novak tells Balthus she wants to lock Evelyn up for fucking life. And Balthus is like, dude, this isn't Evelyn's fault. 
okay, honey. Novak comes back with, uh, temporary insanity brought on by the stress of raising a child with permanent live-in help. <laughs> I didn't like that. It's not fucking mm-hmm. fair and it's gross, Novak. Like, you, that mm-hmm. that was... Yeah, that was stupid. Because it, it is stressful no matter what. And to perpetuate that stereotype makes it less likely that people are going to ask for help if they need it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, if they're rattling around because in their head, they're going to be like... I have to be able to handle this. Or like I have it, like people have it harder than me. It's like, well, this is your life. This is your experiences. It's okay to need help. Yeah, the fact that- I I hate that mm -hmm. when people do that shit like, in the real world, they don't, I'm like, that is their real world. Yeah. Like, fuck off. Right. Let people enjoy things. And- God damn. Yeah. I mean, if it, is there privilege involved in being able to have extra help? Absolutely. But it doesn't mean that you don't have stressful moments and need support as well. I don't know. Just one does not negate the other. Okay. Exactly. Balthus just tells Novak that she's going to fucking prove Evelyn's innocence. Mm-hmm. At the trial, Novak is questioning Corner Warner. Corner Warner says that Evelyn's responsible for Lucy's injuries. Now, Balthus is questioning Corner Warner, and Corner Warner confirms that shaken baby syndrome is the only explanation for Lucy's injuries. So then Balthus asks fucking Corner Warner if she's, quote, aware of hemophagocytic lymphonephrosquarson. I even wrote it all down. I have to pronounce it. (laughs) Hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. What if Corner Warner was like, no, I haven't heard of that. What is that? What is that? (laughs) But she she names this fucking 35 syllable thing. And she's like, do you get it? I mean, or HLH, as it's also known. And Corner Warner's like, um, yeah, she's this Baltus is like, oh, you like human biology? Name three itises. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, baby Deange fucking Baltus asks her this really infuriating question because Corner Warner's like, um, yeah, duh. It's a rare mm-hmm. blood disorder that disrupts liver and bone marrow function, you bitch. Mm-hmm. So, even though Corner Warner agrees that HLH could have caused bleeding in her brain and eyes, it doesn't explain Lucy's trauma, the trauma mm-hmm. to her body, her ribs. That shit is not. It's all classic shaken baby stuff. Yeah. Yes. Balthus argues that CPR could be responsible for the rib fractures, mm. but Corner Warner says, ugh. Chest compressions won't cause the kind of rib fractures that Lucy had. Then Baldus tries to pin the fractures on Stabler picking up Lucy at the park to take her to the ambulance. Ooh, thin ice, Balthy babes. She was like, he, quote, grabbed her. I was like, oh, my God. Didn't he say he grabbed her? Cut to Stabler, gently meaty hands picking up her body and running her to the ambulance. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. Balthus wants to know why a blood test wasn't done. And Corner Warner says, um, there isn't a blood test for HLH. The only way they can see if Lucy has HLH or SBS is to do an autopsy. Then Balthus makes her admit that they can't determine whether it's shaken baby or HLH. She's fucking just spinning hard to create the doubt and she's Uh doing it. Mm -hmm. Now Evelyn takes the stand with Balthus. She (laughs) She denies having hurt Lucy. You're in the fucking audience and you're wearing like a team prosecution jersey. (laughs) You've got a flag (laughs) over your head. And they're like, get her out of here. (laughs) (laughs) You're like doing the chop. You play (laughs) jump around on a (laughs) boombox. That's a very Wisconsin reference, you guys. Mm -hmm. What is the thing that they chant all the time? Asshole, asshole. They do? (laughs) Yeah. Hmm. All right. Evelyn's on the stand. Balthus is questioning her. She denies having hurt Lucy. And they lean into the fact that her fucking husband died. She's wearing a lavender cardigan and a pearl necklace that she wasn't wearing before she ran into Drew in the hallway. (laughs) She's sitting there insisting that she had never spanked or done anything physical to her daughter, Lucy. Yeah, she doesn't believe in corporal punishments, you said. Still, that doesn't mean yep, that doesn't mean that this incident didn't happen though you could very well never have spanked your kids and then had a moment mm-hmm. novak's turn to question evelyn says that she works a lot and doesn't see lucy as much as sarah does and the music wee, 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 as novak goes over who gets lucy up in the morning who hugs her who takes her to the park who puts a band-aid on when she scrapes her knee when she scrapes her knee <laughs> the way i said that <laughs> <laughs> 
She's all but screaming in Evelyn's face. Mm -hmm. Lucy was upset that night and you didn't know how to comfort her. She was ruining your romantic night. Evelyn still denies it. Why don't you believe me? And the camera Mm -hmm. hard zooms in on Stabler in the crowd. Yeah. In the hallway, Novak and Stabes are having a walk and talk. And Novak's like, well, she didn't confess absolutely everything on the stand. So I've got nothing. (laughs) Stabler says that the jury will believe what they have to. And I'm like, I don't know what that means, but okay. Then Stabler gets a call. Beep, boop, beep. Lucy had a stroke and they don't think she's going to live. So now we're back at the hospital. Stabler is speaking with that one doctor. Mm -hmm. Lucy had a massive brain hemorrhage. She would be dead if she hadn't already been on life support. She's in a vegetative state. Life support can only keep her alive for a certain amount of time. Her condition will continue to deteriorate. I can't say that word and I'm going to keep going (laughs) until she gets an infection or life support is turned off. Her like primordial brain is still intact. So the only thing that she can really feel is fucking pain. That's it. Yeah. That's fucking awful. Yep. Every moment is pain. Oh, my God. Stabler wants to get this information to the jury, so he wants a delay. Novak says she doesn't have legal grounds for a delay. Stabler gets in her face, and he's like, this child, blah, blah, blah. He's like, make it legal. Yeah, and she's like, I'll do what I can. So now we're in the courthouse rotunda. (laughs) Novak and Belthus are doing a walk and talk with the judge. Novak brings up Lucy's condition and the stroke and all the stuff that's going on, and that she can only feel pain. Belthus argues that it makes no difference since she was in a coma when the trial started. And the judge is like, bro, there's no grounds to reopen this case. I'm going surfing. <laughs> right, bro, I gotta get hang tag, guys. <laughs> so there's no grounds to reopen the case. Novak says that Evelyn is on trial for abuse, but Lucy may die soon, so she could be charged with murder. Balthus says that a murder charge is only appropriate after life support is turned off, and Evelyn has no intention of doing that. The judge has no choice but to deny the delay and won't allow the case to be reopened. In the courtroom, Stabler is speaking with Novak. He says, how did it go? Novak tells him there is a hung jury. Retrial starts on Monday. Stabler wants the jury to have the info on Lucy's status, but Novak now thinks Stabler was right all along. The jury will sympathize and not convict Evelyn. What Stabler meant by that before is like the jury is going to believe what they have to is they're just, like I said, 12 of us. Yeah. And they're going to be like, no mother could do this, like, in their heads. Because they're just fucking dumb people like everybody else. Mm-hmm. Stabler calls Evelyn a murderer and walks away. Murderer. And then Novak is like, she's not a murderer as long as Lucy is technically alive. And it pans on Stabler's face. And he is just hurt. Stabler comes back to Pride Rock and calls <laughs> Evelyn a murderer. <laughs> In the hospital, Stabler walks in and sees Evelyn reading to Lucy. Evelyn asks him what the fuck he's doing there. And he Mm. says that he came to see Lucy. She asks him the question he's been dying for this entire episode. Do you have children, detective? Oh, God. He's like... (sighs) <sighs> he's just uh, he's like a, a complete body shudder he's like, Ugh. yeah his body shudders so hard it liquefies his insides and he falls into a pile on the floor and then he's like i have four <laughs> I, have, I have four babies <laughs> he tells her to let lucy go so that her pain can end and evelyn replies with dude you only want that so that you can charge me with murder. She says some shit about when Lucy dies being up to God, but okay, the machines though, honey, but Mm -hmm. whatever. And then she says if she loses Lucy, she may as well be dead too. In the office of District Attorney Arthur Branch, Stabler goes to chat with him. That Mm -hmm. is not a common occurrence. He's Mm -hmm. supposed to be sending all of this info through Novak. So he sits down on the other side of Branch's desk. He wants to let Branch know that it's really important that they fight to turn off life support for Lucy. You know Mm -hmm. who I realize that Arthur Branch reminds me of? Hmm. The Big Lebowski. Like the old married to Bunny in the wheelchair guy. Your revolution is over, Mr. Lebowski. Condolences. The bum's lost. Somebody just posted about that. That's him. No, it's not him. No, somebody just posted. It's not the same guy. Somebody just posted about Branch, about who he is and what he's been in. Oh, he was in Roseanne, they said. Oh, yeah, it isn't him. No, it's not him. It isn't yeah, him. Yeah, no, I remember now. Uh, didn't Mary posted something in the Facebook group? Join the Facebook group. Anyway, so Stabler brings up a recent case in California when a father shook his son. And he's like, look at this. There's precedent. I know things about the law. Look at this, Branch. And Branch questions if Stabler is fighting for Lucy or to convict Evelyn of murder. 
which one do you want here, dude? Mm -hmm. Stigler doesn't know if Evelyn's a grieving mother or she's just trying to beat a murder rap. And I say, why not both? But mm -hmm. what he does know is that Lucy is in constant pain and there's no hope for recovery. Branch tells him to be careful or, quote, they'll paint us as baby killers. Fuck you, Branch. Damn. I mean, that, that being what he's worried about is annoying to me. Back at the precinct, Novak's upset as shit that Stabler went over her head and spoke to Branch. Stabler's like, eyes on the plaque, lady. I'm a dad. <laughs> I'm going to talk to Branch when I need to talk to Branch. This is about a child. <laughs> Fucking... 22 years running. <laughs> Take a walk through the hallway. <laughs> Stabler asks her what she thinks is right. And she says she doesn't know because she's not a mother. She's a human person, I would argue, but okay. Stabler tells her, well, welcome to special victims. It's not always black and white. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh, damn. In the judge's chambers, Evelyn Balthus and Novak are there. Balthus is pissed, saying that Novak is trying to kill a child to strengthen her case. And then Evelyn says, quote, she prays every night for Lucy to get better and says that Lucy is in God's hands. Balthus keeps talking about how horrible this is and keeps going on and on. Then the judge says to Novak, quote, what grounds do you have to judicially supersede a parent's right to make a decision for their minor child, Novak? Novak says that Evelyn's parental judgment is nullified by her, quote, legal predicament of abuse charges. Evelyn doesn't want to take Lucy off life support for her own interests of not being charged with murder, so her judgment is biased, is what Novak is saying. Yep. The judge tells Novak to prove that stopping life support is in Lucy's best interest. She's like, uh, okay. Now we're back in trial. The doctor gives a statement on Lucy's status violent pain responses when she is touched and ha she has seizures. She has, br oh my God, this is so terrible. She has mm. brittle and demineralized bones. Like when a nurse changed her diaper, it fucking fractured her hip. Damn. And this kid just feels it. That's all this kid feels. Yeah. Can't move, can't scream, can't do anything. It's fucking awful. Balthus is up and brings up other cases where people woke up from comas, persistent vegetative states, and says that miracles happen. I was like, fucking jack off hand motion. Mm. <laughs> Even saying 10 years after a dude was in a coma, he woke up and asked for fucking pancakes. And I'm like, dude, the baby's bones are demineralized. Yeah. Like, fuck off. Okay. Like disgusting. The the reach. Yeah. But the doctor ends up having to admit that recovery can happen from Balthus's questioning. Novak's up to redirect. The doctor says that Lucy has irreparable brain damage. There is no hope that she can recover and that she is in constant excruciating pain. She can't just wake up and ask for fucking pancakes like Balthus is insinuating. Right. She says that life support is mechanically keeping the shell of Lucy alive. Then the doctor looks at Evelyn and says, there's no hope she will recover. Doctor says with seizure and broken bones, Lucy, again, is in constant excruciating pain. I feel like we've said those three words like yes. a million times and the mom's like, God's hands. And you're like, fuck off, dude. No shit. The music gets all crazy, right? And Evelyn is crying and she yells, enough. And her lawyer's like, fucking shut up. Mm -hmm. Tell them to turn off the machines. She doesn't fucking care about the murder charges anymore and then admits to it. She's like, yeah. I did it. Evelyn turns to talk to Stabler, telling him that the night she hurt Lucy, she was overwhelmed and she just wanted a fucking night to herself. When Lucy wouldn't stop screaming, she got angry and shook her over and over and over until she stopped crying. Then she laid her down and Lucy smiled at her and she seemed okay. She kept telling herself it couldn't be your fault after the doctor had told her about the shaken baby syndrome. She never meant to hurt her. Stabler is like obviously dad concerned, but like you can kind of see his face that he fucking gets it though too yeah. you know mm -hmm. oh and then we find out he does hold on now we're at a bar stabler's standing at the bar but he has his head down craigan walks over and he's like hey buddy Stabler's is fucking hammered yeah he plays a really good drunk detective yeah <laughs> drunk detective yeah it's, it's a sad drunk as opposed to a jolly right. drunk craigan lets stabler know that lucy's life support was unplugged and then she died 10 minutes later corrections allowed evelyn to come down there to be there stabler's drunk <laughs> and Craigan's like, give me your keys, I'll drive you home. Stabler has this little baby picture of Maureen and he shows Craigan and she's got little chubby baby cheeks. Ugh. And he yeah. says he had just gotten out of the Marines. Kathy was pregnant again and he was unemployed. He tells Craig in that one night Kathy went out and he was alone with Maureen. Little baby Maureen, a year and a half old, spilled grape juice all over their new carpet. And when he grabbed her arm to spank her, she twisted away. So he slapped her. When his hand was coming down for a second slap, a voice in his head told him to stop. He says he's standing there in the middle of this room holding the limp body of his little girl. Mm. And she starts crying and he picks her up and keeps saying, I'm sorry, I'm 
sorry, I'm sorry. And he begins to cry and he says, I could have killed my fucking kid over the carpet. And then Craig is like, all right, buddy, let's get out of here and takes him off. And that's the end of the episode. I mean, and when Stabler is saying, when he's talking about that, he's getting choked up, but in the mm. most believable way like this, I don't get choked up at the show lock. I just don't get that kind of emotional about, you know, the acting or whatever. But his acting in this scene, I was just like, holy shit, this is some of the best acting I've ever fucking seen him do. Mm. He earned every one of those dad plaques. Right. As far as I'm concerned. We should send him a best dad ever. Sticker. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. End of the episode. Fucking Toyota. It was a good episode. It was sad and weird. I hated Ugh, it. But I hated it. I hated it. And it's not a good episode. And it's whatever. And I, well, no, it was because I like Staler's acting. Okay. Oh, dude. This is just, you know, I don't want to talk about this. Yeah. When I see articles about parents arrested because of something they did to their kid. I never fucking read it. Mm -hmm. I have zero schadenfreude trigger for that, any of this. Mm -hmm. That said, this chaser will definitely not be extensive. There are brutal moments in it. Trigger warning for anyone who can't put that shit in their mind, which would be me, mm -hmm. except I had to fucking do it. Mm -hmm. So during the episode, Stabler had mentioned a case in California when he went to talk to DA Branch. I'm going to tell you about mm. that because it was a real thing. Mm. On December 3rd, 2001, 24-year-old Moises Ibarra brought his three-month-old son into a hospital in Orange County. <laughs> Baby Christopher's body was limp and had sustained serious injuries. His father gave inconsistent stories as to what happened to his son before admitting that he had shaken and hit Christopher before throwing him into his crib. Oh, my God. Throwing him into I his crib? I fucking gasped when I read that. Three months old. Three months old. The kid, you can barely hold your head up at three months old. Mm, just a little rag doll. Like, Jesus. Yes. Yep. I mean, at three months old, how much does a kid weigh? 10 pounds? 11 pounds, oh, maybe? God. As Christopher was put on life support, Moises was arrested on felony child abuse charges, which, if convicted, could have put him in prison for 13 years and eight months. Moises pled innocent and was held on a quarter million dollars bail. Mm -hmm. Christopher was in a vegetative coma, couldn't breathe on his own, and was being fed through a feeding tube. Doctors made it very clear that there was no hope for Christopher to heal. His mm. mom, Tamara Sepulveda, was absolutely devastated and with the understanding that Christopher would have no chance at recovery, wanted her son taken off life support. She said, quote, I want my baby to go to heaven. Moises refused to agree to it, saying that Jesus. he wanted to hold out for a miracle OK, and both parents have to agree for that kind of thing to be followed through on. Not that it affected his stance at all, but if Christopher didn't make it, Moises would be charged with murder and would be looking at life mm -hmm. in prison. So as the legal battle was on, baby Christopher laid suffering. Mm -hmm. I really couldn't stand this judge, by the way, for specific reasons that I'll get into. Uh, judge Richard Ben, because of the way he treated Christopher's mom. So a little history on the family. Tamara gave birth to Christopher on the toilet in their apartment. And for the short time that Christopher was alive, his parents fought constantly, usually involving Tamara's frustration that Moises didn't treat Christopher well. This is what I didn't like. The judge openly included Tamara, a woman with developmental disabilities, in the blame for Christopher's death. He said as a mother, she failed to protect him. Oh, my God. This woman was fucking suffering and begging for the court to order that her son be removed from life support. So the, the only hope I can give to this fucking judge is that this was maybe a strategy of his to be like, OK, I have to fucking say that both parents are awful so that I can make this next decision, which was he determined that neither parent was fit to make decisions for Christopher based on his ruling. And mm -hmm. so the judge took jurisdiction over the medical decisions, which meant that removing Christopher's life support was up to Judge Ben. Mm -hmm. So the judge made his ruling on October 31st, 2002. After multiple hearings, Christopher had been on life support for nearly a year at this time with zero improvement. His bones were frail mm -hmm. and breaking. His only reactions were pain responses with light or touch. Just changing his diaper was terribly painful for baby Christopher. Oh, God, that's so awful. So all, all the year. stuff they were referencing in the episode was from this fucking case. Mm. Judge Ben ordered that Christopher be taken off life support, which Moises' attorney, Michael Hughes, immediately appealed to the state fourth district court of appeal. Four months later, on February 24th, 2003, three judges heard the appeal and were tasked with deciding Christopher's fate yet again. This kid's still on life support since he was three months old. 
Mm. Attorney John Dodd, representing Moises during this, said that although the court would be able to make orders for the medical care of Christopher, there was no specific law that allowed them to withdraw medical care that would lead to death of the child. Mm -hmm. This was a precedent setting case. So it was a huge deal because this decision would be used moving forward. Hence, Stabler referencing it, right? Mm -hmm. The court decided to hold up the ruling and determine that it was time to take Christopher off life support. Mm -hmm. And on the morning of May 10th, 2003, baby Christopher, 22 months old, was taken off life support at the Healthbridge Children's Rehabilitation Hospital in Orange. Mm -hmm. They continued the feeding tube and pain medications until he passed 45 minutes later. On May 19th, 2003, Moises again pled innocent, this time to a murder charge. He was held on $1 million bail. Over a year later, in June of 2004, Moises Ibarra pled guilty to the manslaughter and felony child abuse in a plea agreement. The agreement Mm -hmm. got him out of the life sentence he was facing for murder because he switched his plea to guilty. Okay. Instead, he was sentenced to 18 years in prison. And I fucking dug to see if I could find any updates on him. And I couldn't. Moises Ibarra is, is a fairly common name. It's not super common, but enough that beyond this time frame, it was really difficult to be able to find anything. So he would be, I mean, that was in 2004. He had been jailed since the end of 2001. So at the very earliest, if he served his full sentence, he would have been released in 2019 because I think they would give him time served. So, yeah, but yeah, either way, super fucked up. Tamara and her mom just constantly were begging for Christopher to be taken off life support because he was just in such an awful situation. Oh, so Mm. heartbreaking. And now it's done. And now we're never going to talk about anything like that ever again. (laughs) Never been on SVU. On SVU ever. It's not even what the show's about anymore. I need a palate cleanser. I want Want you you to now. now. So next week, we got Season 5, Episode 11, Escape. A prisoner escapes prison. A prisoner escapes a cheesecake factory. (laughs) Benson has to mediate a hostage situation, I think. She might be kidnapped as well. Mm. I haven't watched it yet. We'll see. We'll find out next week. Hey, rate and review us, okay? Email us at svupod at gmail.com. Send us stuff at P.O. Box 176, DeForest, Wisconsin, 53532. Oh, my God. Check out our latest package that we received on Instagram from Drew. Amazing. Go check out drewblank.com. Oh, my God. This guy makes awesome shit. Yeah, it's so great. He's funny. And he's fucking funny. Check out our Instagram at SVUPod. Join the Facebook group SVUPod Elite Squad. I love that fucking shit. It's so fun. We also have a chat group called Walk and Talk. And then hashtag little bit loud for finding your little indie pods that aren't with a network. And join the Patreon. We got so much fucking content. Mm-hmm. It's disgusting. It's gross. It's covered it's in filth. It's a gross amount. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Check out our store, too. We have merch and personalized videos. All right. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Balthus asks her. (laughs) What? So then Balthus. I'm like, what are you? (laughs) So then. As Nietzsche once said, we're in the courthouse (laughs) rotunda. (laughs) People say that. Hang 10. Hang 10, dudes. I gotta hit that swell, bras. <laughs> Her hair is like fucking bleach blonde. She's wearing no, but- flip flops and a soaking wet suit. She's like, oh my god, have you guys ever seen Point Break? Oh my god, I lost my puka shell necklace. I can't go surfing without it. <laughs> Bail. <laughs> uh, Stop. <laughs> Ooh. I'm, I'm gonna keep. Song. I'm going. Okay. Song. And to our elite squad patrons: Sonia W, Marissa M, Elkie H, Annie G, Mary D, Andrew, Andrew, Rebecca D, Miranda B, Shelby W, Lex, Emily T, Kayla W, Mallory G, Bonita R, Marin, Vanessa, Amy P, Melanie G, Courtney Dubs, Ursula S, Kate H. Uyana, Catherine M, Kate P, Jessica S, Nicole M, Acacia V, Kelsey D, Jana M, 
Joshua H, Tammy J, Bear, Bear. Crystal, Lucy M, Trisha S, Sam D, Emily A, Mac Attack, Casey W, Abby W, Alexis J, Lauren T, Cassandra S, Kaylin B, Camille Z, Nisha G, Maggie D, K Allen, Katie M, Crystal B, Jessica P, Nada M, Sin, Christina D, Liana, Madison H, Emily O. Oh, 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 Emily O. Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh. Victoria B, Scout G, Melissa M, Desiree D, Drew B, Quinton S, Amberly C, Zan and J, Louise M, <laughs> Eliza W, Katarina G, Sapphire, Monica K, Katie S, Trish S, Angela D, Brenna T, and Andrea M. We love you. Thank you so much for fucking joining the Patreon. Thank you guys you. are cool. Anyways, love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. Stop. No. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>